let's have a look at taking samples and some of the different sampling methods that we can use and we need to know about. So for our assessment, we have to take a random sample from our data set. Okay, it's one of the requirements. So let's think about what is sampling and what makes something a good or a bad method. Now, one of the big ideas is that we want data to be selected randomly. All right. Now, if I've got data that's been selected randomly, then my sample should be representative of the population. All right. And that means that my characteristics are all mixed up in my groups. So a random sample means that every person in the population has the same chance to be chosen. Whereas a bias sample means it's not. So think about, for example, if I was to take a random sample from students in my class, I could put all the names in a hat and draw the names out one by one. Every student has the same chance of being pull, having their name pulled out of the hat. Whereas if I was doing a bias sample, I might just choose the five people that are sitting closest to me. So it means that anyone that's sitting close to me has a very good chance of being chosen, while anyone that's sitting further away has an almost zero chance of being chosen. So they would not have the same probability. So here's another example, is if I'm talking about lollies, then on the left hand side here, we've got an example of a biased set, because in the sample there are only jelly beans, okay? Whereas in my other set of lollies, this is a much more representative sample because I've got different types of lollies. So for example, I've got jelly beans in there, I've got milk bottles in there, I've got pineapples, I've got snakes, I've got all sorts of different things in there, licorice and all sorts. So it's a much more representative mix. So if I'm thinking about, not lollies now, but thinking about taking a sample of people, which is often what we do, um, then we want to have a group of people that have been selected randomly, so we've got a mix of characteristics. So, so for example, I want to have two groups, and in these two groups I want to have both males and females. I want to have people who enjoy different sports in both groups. I want people of different ages in both groups. I want different ethnicities and cultures and types of families in both groups, etc, etc. So that's what I want, is I want a representative sample. So one, a different example is if I do a questionnaire with only blue-eyed students in it, then that is a biased sample because I don't have any information at all about people that have a different colour eyes. So it means that I've got information about one group of my population. So from my population, I know about all these people over here who have blue co coloured eyes, but I know nothing about the rest of that group, the rest of my population. So in terms of sampling methods, here are some, there are some good methods. Here is a couple. Simple random sample, and that's literally like I've got in the picture there, we are just drawing a name out of the hat, okay? And so it's just completely random, every person could get selected. Stratified, it's a little bit more um, complicated. What we do the first is we first of all split the data into different strata. So this might be when I take all of the students in the class and I divide them up and I put all the girls on one side and I put all the boys on the other, all right? So I separate out them first. Then, once I've got them into those separate groups, then I go and take a sample from each of those. So I go and take a random sample of girls and a random sample of boys. Two other methods of sampling, and these are random methods, which will help give us representative data. One, another one is called cluster sampling. And this is quite common when you're dealing with animals. So if you think about most animals, they tend to live in groups. So if I find one, I'm likely to find several of them. And so that's kind of what we do. So in this, the picture that you can see there is that if I was going around and knocking on people's houses, then I'm going to take a sample of houses that are just in a particular area because that's 
close and convenient to where I am. Then I'm going to go wandering along to another spot, take another sample of houses in that particular spot. So that's called clusters. Systematic random sample is another method. So that's when I might have a list of students' names. Okay, class list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly choose somewhere to start. So I might randomly choose to start at person number four. Then I'm going to choose another random, maybe number two. So that means every second person on the list after that is going to be chosen for my sample. So those are some good random methods which give us representative data. Some, there's a couple of methods here that don't give us random samples. So one of them is convenient sample. So that's when I might just take the people, if I was the researcher, I might just sample the four closest people to me. All right, it's convenient, it's easy, but when I've taken that, I'm not getting a representative sample. In fact, I don't have any purple figures in that diagram. Okay. Another type is self-selected. So this is often when you volunteer. So if you think about the TV programs like X Factor um, and a lot of those, those music programs and things where you can vote in for the people that you enjoy, um, those are self-selected sample. Only people that are really interested are going to choose to do it and they, the people that aren't interested might be quite different from those that do choose to do it.